In this video, we'll introduce you to the process of nuclear fusion and show you some examples of fusion reactions. Nuclear fusion is a process in which two or more smaller nuclei collide and form a new, larger nucleus. In some fusion reactions, a neutron, proton, or beta particle can be emitted. In fusion of lighter nuclei, energy is always released. Let's look at an example of fusion. We'll start with a hydrogen 2 or deuterium nucleus with one proton and one neutron, and a hydrogen 3 or tritium nucleus with one proton and two neutrons. We'll see what happens when these two nuclei move toward each other and collide. As these two nuclei collide, a neutron is emitted and energy is released. Let's look at the results. We'll show energy over here. And the nucleus we're left with has two protons, so it's a helium nucleus. It also has two neutrons, so its mass number is four. Its nuclear notation is written like this, with a charge of two and a mass number of four. This reaction also has emitted a neutron, and the nuclear notation for a neutron is written like this, with a charge of zero and a mass number of one. So to summarize, the products of this fusion reaction are a helium-4 nucleus, a neutron, and energy. You may recall that the two original reactants were hydrogen-2, or deuterium, and hydrogen-3, or tritium. So we can now use what we start with and what we end up with to write an equation for this fusion process. A hydrogen-2 or deuterium nucleus collides with a hydrogen-3 or tritium nucleus and they fuse together to form a helium-4 nucleus. And in the process, a neutron is released, as well as energy. Notice we have a total of two protons and three neutrons in the reactants and also a total of two protons and three neutrons in the products, so protons and neutrons are conserved. This is also reflected in the equation. The total charge on the left is one plus one, which is equal to positive two, and the total charge on the right is two plus zero, which is also equal to positive two. The total mass on the left is two plus three, which is equal to five, and the total mass on the right is 4 plus 1, which is also 5, so mass is conserved. Let's take a closer look at the two nuclei that are colliding. The proton in each nucleus has a positive charge, so we'll replace the P with a plus sign. Because like charges repel, there's a large repulsive force between the protons from each nucleus. In order to overcome this large repulsive force and fuse together, the two reacting nuclei must have very high kinetic energy when they collide. Kinetic energy is temperature, so to achieve fusion of deuterium and tritium, extremely high temperatures are required. Typically, this reaction needs temperatures between 100 million and 200 million degrees Celsius. If the two nuclei collide with enough energy, the protons are forced very close together. When they are this close, something called the strong nuclear force takes over and binds them together. The strong nuclear force is much stronger than the repulsive force caused by the positive charges, so the nucleus stays together. But the strong nuclear force has a very limited range, so it only kicks in after the nuclei have collided hard enough to get very close together. A number of fusion reactions are thought to take place in the central core of our Sun and other stars where temperatures are extremely hot. In this particular reaction, two hydrogen-1 nuclei, or protons, fuse to form a hydrogen-2, or deuterium nucleus, and a positive beta particle, known as a positron. Notice how charges and mass are both conserved. In a subsequent fusion reaction, another hydrogen-1 nucleus fuses with the deuterium nucleus that formed in the first reaction, forming a nucleus of helium-3. In a third reaction, two helium-3 nuclei fuse to form a helium-4 nucleus, and two hydrogen-1 nuclei, or protons. 
and in a fourth reaction, a helium-3 nucleus from reaction 2 collides with a proton from reaction 3 to form a helium-4 nucleus and a negative beta particle. Reaction 4 helps clean up extra helium-3 nuclei from reaction 2 and protons from reaction 3, producing more helium-4 in the process. Using this series of fusion reactions, our sun is gradually converting its hydrogen fuel into helium, releasing huge amounts of energy. In some older stars, where large amounts of helium have accumulated and the temperature is very high, two helium-4 nuclei can fuse and form a nucleus of beryllium-8. Notice how both charge and mass are conserved here. This beryllium-8 nucleus can also fuse with another helium nucleus to form a single nucleus of another element. Pause the video and see if you can predict what that new nucleus is. We see that it is a nucleus of carbon-12, the very element that all living things contain. It is believed that right after the Big Bang, almost all of the matter in the universe was hydrogen and helium. It is only through fusion reactions inside stars that other elements were formed. These kind of fusion reactions in stars account for the formation of many of the lighter elements. Heavier elements are formed by an exploding star called a supernova. Only in these is the energy high enough to allow the larger nuclei, with their high number of repelling protons, to overcome the repulsive forces and fuse together. All of the heavier elements on Earth are thought to have come from one or more ancient supernova explosions somewhere in our galaxy. Scientists have known about nuclear fusion since the early 1930s. Their goal is to someday use controlled fusion as a way of producing power. However, extremely high temperatures are required and it's very hard to contain the mixture of fusing elements called plasma. So fusion reactors are not yet a practical source of power, but people are hopeful that someday they may be.